In this video, we're going to be talking about converting from slope intercept form into standard form. So a few reminders on these two different forms. With slope intercept, you have that y equals. So the y starts by itself. And we're going to try to convert from the y being by itself in slope intercept form into a different into standard form where the x and the y are together on the same side of the equal sign. And actually what you have by itself in standard form is just that constant c, which is just a number. So um, let's get started with this first example. We have y equals 3x plus 2. So we want this 3x to be on the other side next to the y. So all we're going to do is move it over using what we know about algebra. Because it's a positive 3x, we want to cancel it out by subtracting 3x from both sides. So the 3x is cancel. We're left with just that constant 2 on one side of the equal sign all by itself. And on the other side, we have y minus 3x. Now, y minus 3x is a perfectly valid and correct way of writing your answer. That said, usually we put the x before the y, like you see here in the form, The x comes first. Really, it's just like to keep things alphabetical. So it's not a big deal, but I'm going to always put the x term first. So the, the x term is negative 3x. So we have negative 3x, and then the y term is just a positive 1y. So this would be negative 3x plus y. So there's our whole equation. We've got the x and the y together, so it's finally in standard form. So now let's try a more interesting type of problem where our slope is a fraction. So remember, y equals mx plus b. That m is a slope. And we know that slope is rise over run. That's a fraction, rise over run. So it makes sense that we're going to see a lot of equations in slope intercept form that have fractions in them because slope is often a fraction. The problem with this, however, is that in standard form, typically we want the a, b, and c values to be integers. That just means that they're not fractions. So you could have 1, 2, 3, 4, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. You can have 0, but you can't have fractions in standard form. So what that means is we need to eliminate the denominator in this fraction so that all of our coefficients, the a, b, and c, are all integers. So how do we do that? Let, let me just write that out. Our goal here is to get rid of denominators. To get rid of denominators. Well, in this case, we only have that one denominator of four. So the question now is, how do we get rid of a denominator of four? It's very simple. One over four is really just a division problem, which means one divided by four. So if we want to get rid of that 4, which it, it was just 1 divided by 4, how can we undo that division that's happening in this fraction? Well, we undo division by multiplying. So what do we multiply by? By 4. So here's your rule for getting rid of denominators. You look at what number is in the denominator. In this case, it's 4 and you multiply both sides of the equation by that number. It's that simple. So I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by 4, and I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by 4. Now, I'm going to put it in parentheses to show that I'm multiplying everything on the right-hand side by 4. And that's really important when we start distributing everything out. So we've got 4 times y, which gives us 4y. And then on the left or on the right side, we have 4 times 1 fourth x. Well, right away, we can see that 4 times a fourth is going to cancel out. Those fours cancel, giving us just 1x. I'm going to write this all out, though, just so it's really clear. We have 4 times 1 fourth x, right? 
and that cancels out, those fours cancel out, giving us the x. Now, we're not done. Remember how we put all of this in parentheses, and what that signals to us is that that four doesn't just multiply times the one fourth x, it also multiplies times the negative three. So here we also have to have plus four times negative three. So it's a plus here because it's a positive four. So plus four times negative three, which came from the equation. So four times negative three is negative 12. We're almost done. At this point, the hard part is over. We got rid of the denominators. We achieved our goal. Now all that's left is to move this x term to be with the y. So we'll do that by subtracting x from both sides, leaving us with negative x plus 4y equals negative 12. And that's our final answer in standard form. So just to recap here, we needed to get rid of this denominator of 4, and we did that by multiplying both sides by 4. And then we had to remember to distribute that 4 to both the 1 fourth x and to the negative 3. And then once we did that, our fractions were gone. One more example to see that concept in action again. So here's our last equation that we want to convert to standard form. So again, we have that fraction there. And again, our goal is to get rid of the denominator. And again, I'm writing it out because it's that important. Now, how do we get rid of the denominator? We look at what number is in the denominator. So in this case, what number is in the denominator? three. And we multiply both sides by that number three. So multiply the left by three, multiply the right by three, and then distribute and simplify. So on the left, we have three times y, which is three y. On the right hand side, remember, we've got to distribute it first to the first term where the threes will cancel, leaving us in this case with just that negative five x but then again, we have to take that same 3 and distribute it to that 2. So we have 3 times 2, which gives us plus 6. It's really, really easy to forget to distribute to that second number in the equation because we get so excited about canceling out the 3s that we forget that it's not completely canceled out. It canceled here with the fraction, but that three still gets multiplied a second time by that second number. So don't, don't forget about that important step. Now that we're here, all that's left is to move that x term over to the other side to be with the y. So this time it's negative, so we're just going to add five x to both sides, giving us a final answer of positive five x plus three y equals Six.